Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. For all of you who absolutely love evidence synthesis, whether it's systematic review, meta-analysis, anything like that, even review articles in general, you gotta know about this new paper that just came out. This is a position statement about the use of AI in evidence synthesis and it's coming from Cochrane, the Campbell Collaboration, JBI, and the Collaboration for Environmental Evidence. So I'm gonna include a link in the description, but this just came out a few days ago, uh, maybe like I don't know, sometime during this past week. I don't remember exactly when it was, but you need to read this if you're doing evidence synthesis, okay? It's a five-page paper. It's not a very long paper. Highly suggest you take the time to go and read it, but I'm gonna highlight some of the things that I thought were the most interesting as I skimmed through here. So conveniently, they do have these five key messages here in the beginning. I'm not gonna go through and read them all to you because that's boring and I trust that you can read things for yourself. But some of the key things that I wanted to highlight First and foremost, they support the aims of the Responsible Use of AI and Evidence Synthesis Recommendations, also known as RAISE. We're going to get to that here in a little bit. And this is the one that really caught my attention, okay? Because I know a lot of folks out there are like, oh, we can use LLMs for screening and data extraction. We don't need to check it because it's an LLM and it's smart. No, right? So look at point number four. AI and automation and evidence synthesis should be used with human oversight. And I would add on to that if you're gonna use it. So let's keep on going here through this paper, see what else is interesting. So some of the things that I really liked about this paper was they pointed out how AI is not always transparent. So they say here it's potentially disruptive, but it's characterized by opaque decision-making, black box predictions, susceptible to overfitting, potentially embedded with algorithmic, algorithmic biases, and at risk of fabricated outputs and hallucinations. And people wonder why I say we need to keep an eye on LLMs for evidence synthesis, right? So all you guys who are like, oh, we could just use this for screening. We can use this for data extraction. It'll be perfect. We need to be checking what the AI is saying, okay? They highlighted a number of very real issues with AI here, at least, I, and I'm using the term AI very broadly, right? But hopefully you guys, if you watch the channel, you know here I'm specifically referring to LLMs in particular when I say that things like hallucinations are going to be a major problem potentially when you deal with data extraction for research synthesis. Now, they continue on, they talk about how some risks of misuse of AI, specifically they talk about how there could be an erosion of methodological standards and reducing reliability. I'm not gonna run through this. Hopefully, like I said, I really want you to read this paper. Now, one thing I will say before we continue on to the next page, I know for a lot of you guys out there who are experienced in systematic review, you're experienced with meta-analysis, you've seen these really cool developments happening with AI. I know a lot of you guys, this article is probably going to seem like we're, we're just telling you things you already know, okay? So the folks who I really want to pay attention here are the folks who are new to systematic review, you're new to meta-analysis, and you're probably seeing all of these websites telling you how they're gonna use AI to help speed up your review. Okay, those are the folks I really want to pay attention as we go through some of these things here. And again, take the little bit of time it takes to read this paper. It's only five pages. It's not crazy long, only five pages. So continuing on, let's see what they say. I wanna jump down to the raise recommendations, right? So these are remain ultimately responsible for the evidence synthesis, report AI use in your evidence synthesis manuscript transparently. Continuing on, and they have one here for ensure ethical, legal, regulatory standards are adhered to when using AI. So I'm going to go backwards a little bit to this first recommendation, uh, this remain ultimately responsible. So the things that are important here, the thing, actually all of it's important. It's only five pages. It's jam-packed full of important stuff. But the one that jumped out at me about this as I was reading through here, when considering using an AI system or tool, be critical of its evaluations. Let that sink in for a minute. You need to be critical about its evaluations. Why is this important? Well, think about the evaluations we often see in regards to LLMs. Are they actually really super relevant and are they clear, are they transparent? Are some of these things going to be as transparent as you would hope that your evidence synthesis will be? They might not be. That's what, I mean, I can't really get across to you how important it is to really critically examine the AI that you wanna use for your review, if you're gonna use AI. But anyway, continuing on, they say you need to understand what it, whether it does what it says that it's going to do to an adequate level, as well as its limitations and whether it can be applied to the context of this specific synthesis. Now, this contextual piece is really important, okay? Because think about this for a moment. It is very well known that LLMs are very sensitive to prompt. 
So that means that they are very sensitive to the context that's getting fed into them, which means that the context of your research synthesis can also influence the effectiveness of these LLMs. Okay, so moving on, use of the AI should be justified and should involve demonstrating that the tools are methodologically sound so that they do not undermine the trustworthiness or reliability. Moving on to the second little chunk here about reporting AI use in your manuscript transparently, they recommend that authors need to declare when they have used AI, uh, if it makes or suggests any sorts of judgments, okay? So judgments, this can be eligibility of a study, that's like study screening, it could be risk of bias assessment, it could be the extraction of data. All of these steps are making or suggesting judgments, so we need to make sure it's declared. So I'm skipping down, and like I said, just because I'm skipping down through the paper here doesn't mean that you shouldn't read this. This thing is five pages jam-packed full of information you need to know. I've only highlighted things that I found interesting and I wanna mention here. So moving on, one of the things I found very, very, very interesting was they state here that Cochrane's Rapid Review Methods Group has a separate position statement on this. Now what they're referring to is that the use of AI can enhance the quality of evidence synthesis and help address some of the trade-offs inherent to accelerated timelines. So that's where they reference this rapid review and they say, for example, abstract screening and rapid reviews is often conducted by a single reviewer. So they say that there's potential for using AI as a second reviewer. Now that's very, very, very interesting to me because there's research around using AI for screening. Uh, and I will tell you from my experience so far, I feel it is very context specific. And just because you see that an LLM works well in a different context for screening does not mean that it is going to be just as effective in your context for screening. So if you are thinking about using AI, as a second reviewer or something like that, please make sure you do some testing. So moving on, for evidence synthesis to make informed decisions, we need to make sure stuff is publicly available about the tool. I think that you would hope this is the case, but this is actually a problem a lot of times, right? So a lot of times when we see these AI tools, they're things that are paywalled and we don't necessarily know what is happening behind the scenes. So to me, what this really speaks to is the fact that we need to be thinking about using open source uh, AI, open source tools. So they call for tool developers to proactively adhere to the recommendations. So things that we can do is we can ensure that there's clear information about how the tool works and its terms and conditions. We have publicly available testing and training evaluations, and we have transparent information on the strengths and limitations of the system. Now think about that for a moment, because if you are a company and your tool does not work well, that's often not something that you are like really apt to publish, right? So again, this is really pushing us toward in my opinion, this is really pushing us towards using open source tools where we have data sets there, we have all of the runs there, all of the code there, people can go duplicate and replicate the work that we did and hopefully find very, very similar results. And here they note that evaluation and validation studies are critical. Okay, so whew, I'm not gonna rant about this. I, I hope you get my point that we need more open source tools in this space. And from my reading of this particular statement, this really supports this idea that we need open source tools that are very transparent about what testing they've done, what they've been validated with, and also provide the data sets and the code to help replicate these things. So let me see, Ah, the last thing that I wanted to point out here is they do have a template that you can use that's kind of a generic reporting template for when you use AI in your evidence synthesis. So long story short, Here's how they conclude this, and this is, uh, I think, a really good takeaway message. They say, and I'm going to quote here directly, ultimately, evidence synthesis are responsible for their work, how they use AI, and any implications, including social and environmental impacts. So what does that mean? Think on that for a minute. Let it reflect in your mind. What does this mean? You are responsible for this. You cannot say, well, AI told me that, so I wrote it. Well, yeah, AI told you that, but AI is not a person. AI doesn't have human judgment. AI is just an algorithm, right? So what they are saying here is that you as the evidence synthesis are ultimately responsible for your work and how you're using AI and what comes from using that AI, okay? So takeaway messages here. My personal opinion, we are still not in a place where we can just say you can use AI, AI specifically like large language models. I do not feel we are in a place where we can say we can use large language models to help us with data screening. Um, 
I think we can potentially use them as the second reviewer, as they alluded to uh, up here in this section, where they talk about using AI as a second reviewer in some situations. Perhaps that is useful depending upon your context and depending upon if there's actually evidence that it works in your context. So maybe, but the, the main emphasis here is there's still human judgment. There's still human reviewer happening, right? So we're talking about using AI as potentially a second or a third reviewer. Okay, but you still need to put in that time and energy to have a human go through and review. Now let's talk really briefly about data extraction, okay? So with data extraction, uh, those of you who watch the channel know that I have the AI-assisted data extraction software where the LLM will actually analyze your study and analyze your prompts and do a first pass at evaluating that what the answer should be, and it'll extract that data for you. Now, there's been a lot of conversation from folks I know who ask me like at conferences and stuff, they're like, hey, why don't you just add a record all button? And I have an ethical stance on this, okay? This is why I'm not adding that re record all button. My ethical stance is you as a human need to check every single data point that that AI extracts. Okay, that's why I have the source button in that software so that it can jump you to the page where it extracted that data and you as the human can read it and ensure that it is actually accurate before you hit record. And that is why every single data point in that tool has the record button. So to answer a question that's been asked of me many, many times, and I believe I've answered it in pretty much the same way every single time, will I add a record all button? No because ethically, I do not feel that's how this software should be used right now. And as I mentioned before, I, well, I don't know if I mentioned it on the channel, but I've at least mentioned it to people in person. This is open source software. If you wanna record all button, just fork it and add your record all button. And at that point, it's it's not mine anymore, right? You have, you've taken this open source thing, you've made it your own, that's fine. But ethically, right now with the current state of how data extraction works with large language models, I will not be adding a record all button. It'll just be a record on every single one of those prompts because I very firmly believe that you need to double check every single thing that that AI has extracted. So the Noah's talked for forever. What is the takeaway message here? Please take however long it takes you to read five pages to read through this position statement because regardless of your field, Cochrane-Campbell collaboration, JBI, and the Collaboration for Environmental Evidence, these are all very, very well-known organizations in the evidence synthesis space, and chances are at least one of them is relevant to your field. So what their position statement says matters and is going to matter for the in the future as you start doing more and more systematic reviews and meta-analyses and as you see AI and you want to incorporate these AI tools into your workflows. So please be responsible. I already know you're trying to be responsible because you're watching this channel, right? You're watching this video about a paper, which is about a statement, right? So like, I already know that deep down you want to be responsible in your use of AI and systematic reviews. And I am so happy that hopefully I am helping you do that, right? Hopefully I am helping you do that. Be a responsible user of AI. So again, please don't inherently trust all these AI tools. Please make sure there is evidence. They outline really well what types of evidence they want to see and how they want to see it discussed. So with that, pretty much just going to leave this here. So uh, please let me know, let me guys know down in the comments what you think. If you're seeing anything really interesting with AI and systematic reviews in your field, please let me know. If you're seeing different position statements from other major organizations in your field, please do let me know. One of the things I've been kind of on the fence about lately with the channel is I'm not sure if reviewing papers like this and briefly talking about it is something that's of interest to you guys, or if you guys just happen to see these on your own and then me posting this just becomes redundant. So please let me know if you wanna see more uh, discuss paper discussions and things like this. I kind of like doing it because I end up reading these papers anyway, and it gives me an opportunity to kind of think aloud and think about what would I be saying to my friends if we were discussing this paper. So I really like doing this, but I don't know if it's something that's actually helpful for you guys. So if you can let me know down in the comments, I greatly appreciate it. The other one last thing you can do for me is if this video has been helpful for you, please like and subscribe to help support the channel. And with that, I will let you guys go. Have an absolutely wonderful afternoon, and I will see you all in the next video.